Jenny and Ben were about to get married. They wanted to book a hotel for their wedding ceremony in the party, so they went to a wedding planner to look at some options. She told them only three hotels were available for the day they wanted and showed them the pictures. Which one should they choose? Take a closer look at the third floor windows of the first hotel. In the last window on the right, there's a creepy shadow of a monster that appears and disappears. Five stars or not, no one would like to get married in a haunted place unless they're an Adams family member. In the third hotel, only has two stars. It probably doesn't have the facilities to host a wedding, so the best choice is the second hotel. Great choice, the wedding planner said, and you're in luck because they actually have a great discount offer. If you can answer this riddle correctly, you won't have to pay for the ballroom rental. Here it is. Those who have it, do not say it. Those who take it, do not know it. Those who know it, do not want it. What is it? Do you know the answer? It's fake money. The next day, Ben and Jenny went to the hotel to pick the best ballroom for their party. The hotel manager took them to three different rooms where they could host everything, from the ceremony itself to the dinner and after party. Which one should they pick? Do you see a little mouse hole in the corner of the first ballroom? The couple wouldn't want such uninvited guests at their party. As for the second ballroom, the chandelier looks like it might fall down any minute. Not the safest option, so they should pick the third ballroom. It was time for Ben and Jenny to pick the wedding menu. Since they were not paying for the venue, they wanted to spare no expense in serving food that the guests would never forget. That's why they called three different Michelin star chefs. Each of them prepared a different dish and presented them for a tasting. Which chef, and therefore, which dish should they go for? Even though the dish the second chef made looks perfectly fine, do you see a rat's tail hanging from his chef's hat? There must be some ratatouille situation going on there. So that's a pass. The third dish looks like spaghetti, right? Well, look again. Those are actually very thin snakes. Exotic flavors might not be the best option, so they better go with the classical burger that the first chef made. Before they made their wedding vows, Jenny had to say yes to a dress. So, she went to a Qatar store to check their wedding gown collection. She explained to the designer the style of the dress she wanted for her ceremony. The designer said he had just the perfect gown for her and would bring it to her if she answered his riddle correctly. He asked, if a gown takes an hour to dry, how many hours will it take six dresses to dry? It'll still take one hour because they'll all dry at the same time. Ben had one last item to buy on his wedding shopping list, and it was what fastens two people yet touches only one. Can you figure out what it is? It's a wedding ring, of course! Ben headed to a jewelry store to get something blue for his bride. The store owner showed him three different wedding rings with blue gemstones. Which one should he buy? The second ring has an engraving inside, so it must have belonged to someone else before. The gemstone on the third ring has a tiny crack in it. That can only mean it's made of glass or even plastic, so Ben should buy the first ring with a sapphire. Next, Ben and Jenny were going to send out invitations. One print shop offered them three different versions of invitations. Which one should they choose?
Do you remember the name of the hotel they booked? It was Sunrise Lodge, but the first invitation says Sunset Lodge, so this one won't do. And on the third invitation, their names are printed as Benny and Jen. That's not our couple, so they should choose the second invitation. Before the wedding, three of their friends paid them a visit. One of them brought a painting as a wedding gift, but all three claimed that they were the artist who had created it. Two of them must be lying. Can you figure out who the actual artist is? Take a look at the signature on the painting. It says, Denise. Now look at the third friend's necklace. It has the letter D. So she must be Denise, the artist who painted the painting. It was finally the day of the wedding, and Ben and Jenny's guests started to arrive. However, the hotel security spotted three suspicious-looking people who could be uninvited. Take a look at these three guys. Can you tell which one is not supposed to be at the wedding? Do you see the hotel wristbands that say Ben and Jenny that the second and the third guys are wearing? That can only mean they are actually invited. So it's the first guy who's crushing the wedding. Sorry, dude, no free drinks for you. After the vows were exchanged, it was time to party. As Ben and Jenny were dancing, someone spilled their drink on Jenny's dress, but no one saw who it was. Jenny spotted three people who could have done it. Take a look at them. Can you tell who ruined her dress? The first guy has spots on his shirt that resemble stains from the spilled drink, but they are actually part of the pattern, so it can't be him. The third lady looks clean, but the hem of the second lady's skirt looks dirty, so it must be her who did it. After the ceremony ended, Ben and Jenny wanted to take a photo to capture the moment forever. But take a look at it, there's something strange about it. Can you spot what it is? Can you see a woman hiding behind the trees, watching them? She is wearing a witch hat, but it's a wedding ceremony and not a costume party. Creepy. Right before leaving, Jenny suddenly vanished. Then the witch suddenly appeared in front of Ben and said, You may only kiss the bride if you figure out with whom you really tied the knot. Ha <laughs> ha! Then two Jennies appeared in front of Ben. Can you tell which one is his real wife? Remember the wedding photo? The Jenny on the left is the real one because her tattoo is on the same side as in the photo. Now that Ben and Jenny's wedding was over, phew, it was time for them to pick a honeymoon destination. They went to a travel agency to book a tour. The travel agent offered them three different holiday destinations, Ibiza, Cannes, and the Caribbeans. Which one should they go to? Have you noticed the weather forecast on TV in the office? It states that the weather in Ibiza is going to be windy in the upcoming days, and in Cannes, it's going to be rainy, so they should pick the Caribbeans and enjoy the sun. The travel agent said she could upgrade their plane tickets to business class for free. It would be her wedding gift to them. But they had to crack this riddle. What can travel around the world while staying in a corner? It's a stamp. Look at these maids attentively. One of them is richer than the other. Can you figure out which? Even though the maid on the left is in a luxurious apartment, she just cleans it. But have a look at the maid on the right. She has an expensive watch on her wrist. She is definitely richer. Look at these students. Who's cheating?
The guy in the front row, he's balancing an open book on his foot. Mrs. Lawrence went missing on Friday. Her husband informed the police and they started an investigation. The last person to see the woman was a shop assistant in a jewelry store. She confirmed that the woman wearing a red dress and red shoes had bought a necklace that day. On Saturday, Mrs. Lawrence called the police herself. She whispered, I'm locked in some house. I managed to find a cell phone, but I may be discovered at any... The call got suddenly interrupted. The police officer who had been talking to her managed to track the call, but she could only figure out the street. Look at the houses in the street and try to figure out where Mrs. Lawrence is kept. She must be in this house. Look, there's a tiny piece of red fabric on the fence over there. And Mrs. Lawrence was wearing a red dress. Ten witches met up for their annual coven. The head witch looked at the rest of the group and exclaimed, According to the laws of our community, we can't live among people or communicate with them. And still, one of you has broken this rule. Look at the witches and find out who it is. It's the witch in the purple hat. There's a smartphone in her pocket. Three friends, Kathy, Mark, and Lauren, gathered together to catch up on their latest news at Lauren's place. At one point, they decided to play hide-and-seek, but it was Lauren's turn to look for her friends. She easily found Mark, but even with his help, she couldn't locate Kathy. Uh -oh. Can you help Lauren find her friend? She took her task seriously. Look, she's hiding in a trash can. Ew. Discover the Sun was a very popular travel agency. It sold package Yay! tours to the hottest and most exotic destinations. But one day, the police found out that this company helped criminals flee the country. They also learned the exact date when it would happen the next time. On that day, several police officers arrived at the airport. They stopped a group of tourists who were flying to a Caribbean island. But the detectives didn't know the criminal's identity. That's why they had to search the baggage of all the passengers. Look at their bags and say who the criminal is. It's the young woman on the left. If she's going on a package tour to a hot place, why does she need a winter jacket? Megan invited her friends to a restaurant to celebrate her birthday. They had a lot of fun. Megan got the best birthday present ever. Her friends gave her a ring with a large diamond. But suddenly, the room plunged into darkness. After several minutes of total confusion, the lights oh no. came back on. But Megan's ring was gone. Look at the image attentively and try to figure out who stole it. It's the waiter. Look at the glass he's holding. He put the ring inside. Now there's much more water in it. Jacob's girlfriend, Nicole, loved riddles. One day, she was on a business trip to France. She called Jacob and told him it was her relative's birthday. Could you go and congratulate my family member, please? When the guy asked her which relative he had to visit, Nicole answered, It's the daughter of the only son of my grandfather. Who is this mysterious relative Jacob is asked to congratulate? It's Nicole's sister. Ms. Lopez took her students to an art museum. Half an hour into the excursion, a worried museum worker came up to the professor. He told Ms. Lopez that one of the exhibits, an ancient vase, had been damaged. 
the culprit was most likely one of the students. Only three of them came close to the vase. Maria said, After I looked at the vase, I noticed my makeup was smudged, so I went straight to the bathroom. Antony replied, I didn't touch the exhibit. After looking at it, I went to the next room to see dino skeletons. And Nathan said he'd been following Miss Lopez, taking notes. One of these students is lying, but who? Anthony, there are no dinosaur bones in the art museum. Tyler made a bet with a friend that he could get out of any locked place. The next thing he knew, he was in a large room, locked in a cage. There were three uh -oh. levers in the wall next to the cage. If he pulled the first lever, he would let hungry lions into the cage. The second lever would fill the cage with water. And the third lever would activate a special mechanism. It'd make the top of the cage move down towards the bottom, crushing everyone and everything inside. Uh -oh. Which lever should Tyler pull to survive? His only choice is the second lever. All the water will flow out through the bars of the cage. Matthew has only black and white socks, but he keeps them all mixed. One evening, the guy is in a hurry. He's getting ready for a date. Suddenly, the power goes out. Now it's completely dark in the room. The guy has 10 white and 10 black socks in the drawer. How many socks must he pull out of the drawer to get two matching ones? Just three. In a set of three socks, he's bound to have two socks of the same color. Dennis, Maria, and Julie were at a party. They decided to play a game. There were five hats, two red ones and three yellow ones. The friends closed their eyes, took a random hat each, and put them on their heads. Then they opened their eyes and looked at one another. Each of them had to guess what color the hat on their head was. Dennis and Julie said they didn't know, but Maria exclaimed that she knew the color of her hat. What color was it? It was yellow. Maria saw that Dennis and Julie were wearing red hats, and she knew there were only two of those. You need to take two apples from your garden and bring them to your friend but she lives on the other bank of the river. To get to her house, you have to cross a bridge. It can hold your weight and the weight of one apple. If you try to step on the bridge with two apples, it'll collapse. And the water in the river is swarming with piranhas. What can you do to bring your friend two apples if you can only make one trip? You should cross the bridge while juggling the apples. Ben woke up in a hospital. He only remembered his name and nothing else. A doctor came in to check on the guy. He said three young women were waiting to see Ben. The women came in. Strangely, each of them claimed to be the guy's sister, but only one of them is telling the truth. Who was it? The one girl in the middle, she has a birthmark on her hand, and Ben has the same. Two roommates, Hannah and Megan, were walking home after doing their weekly grocery shopping. Hannah kept complaining about how heavy her bags were. Then Megan told her, I don't understand why you're upset. If you gave me one of your bags, I would have twice more bags as you do. And if I gave you one of mine, we would have the same number of bags. How many bags were the girls carrying? Megan had seven bags, while Hannah was only carrying five bags.
You're at Aaron and Cleo's wedding. Here's Aaron standing alone. Which of these ladies is his wife to be? It's this one. Look, there's her name, Cleo, on her bracelet. Three girls are fighting over a doll. It belongs to one of them, but each of the three says it's hers. Who do you think the real owner of the doll is? It must be this girl. Look, she and the doll have matching outfits. It's Halloween, and some people got dressed as ghosts, but there's one real ghost among them. Who do you think it is? Look, this person doesn't cast a shadow. Three friends went camping. Two of them are real people, and one is a robot. Take a closer look at the photo of them and tell me who you think the robot is. It must be this guy. Take a look at the footprints each of them left. This guy's footprints are actually wheel prints, which is not very common for a real human. Amanda and her mom are participating in a game show. It's the final round, and Amanda's task is to figure out which of these two women is her mom. Both women are wearing masks, so Amanda cannot see their faces. Can you help her? Pay attention to the woman's hair color. Amanda is redheaded. This woman has red hair too, so I bet it's her mom. In any case, Amanda must know what color her mom's hair is, so she's safe here. Local police got information that their little town had been invaded. Officers started walking around asking for people's ID cards. I'll show them to you one by one, and you must decide who looks suspicious. For example, this one. What's your verdict? Look at this guy's birth year. No, it's definitely not a real ID. Here's another one. What can you say about this lady? Look at her place of residence. It's just the name of some place. There's no mention of a state or country. Nope, this person is suspicious too. The next person is this young lady, and here's her ID card. Do you see anything suspicious? She seems fine to me. I'd let her go. Another one. What about this person? This time, pay attention to this photo. All document photos should have a white background. This one isn't an officially issued ID card, so I'd say he's suspicious. I have the last suspect for you. What do you say? Is there anything we should be concerned about? No, he's okay. Let him go. A rich lady, Mrs. Reed, was looking for a person to clean her house every week. She invited three candidates and asked them why they wanted the job. Amelia said she wanted to earn some money during the summer to travel to another state with her friends. Colton said his mother forced him to do something in the summer so that he didn't play video games all day long. Danica said she was totally broke and needed money to survive. When they left, Mrs. Reed saw that her diamond necklace was missing. She guessed that one of the candidates had stolen it, so she invited them again. Take a look at them and figure out who the thief is. It's Danica. She said she was broke. The last time she was there, she was wearing old clothes. 
But look at her now. She has new clothes, gold earrings, and an iPhone. She must have stolen the necklace and sold it. On a snowy winter day, police got a call that one of the houses in the neighborhood had been robbed. A detective visited people living there, but everyone said that they'd been staying at home because of the weather. Still, the detective understood who was lying. This person became the main suspect. Who is it? It must be the person living in this house. He said he'd been staying at home, but he obviously parked his car after the snow had already built up on the driveway. So, the car was away for a while. Why would he lie? Another day, another crime. Mr. Spencer, a businessman, was robbed. He said he'd had a heavy safe full of cash in his bedroom. Now it was gone, and he was worried that he didn't have any proof that he'd ever possessed it. Still, a detective said that he believed the man and asked for details. How did the detective know the businessman wasn't a liar? Look, there's dents on the floor. Something really heavy was indeed standing there for a long time. There was another robbery in a small town. And the main suspect was Damon, the victim's old friend turned enemy and ex-business partner. The next day, on August 7th, the police paid Damon a visit. He wasn't at home. When they reached him by phone, Damon said he was on vacation in Greece and that he left a week before. The police examined his apartment. When the detective looked around, he realized Damon had left recently. How did he understand it? Look at the calendar on the wall. It says August 6th, which is the day of the crime. If Damon had really left the week before, his calendar would date back to the day when he departed instead of yesterday. In a small town, someone had stolen all the chicken nuggets from a local store. The store owner called the police and they started the investigation. There were three suspects. Mr. Jones said that he'd already been at work at that time. Mr. Collins said that his family was vegan, so he wouldn't be interested in chicken nuggets. Mr. Martin said the police had just woken him up. Who's a liar? The thief is Mr. Collins. He said his family was vegan. But look, they keep chickens. That's suspicious. Someone stole a bike in a small town, and the police were working hard to find it. There were three main suspects, all of them teenagers. Ava said that she'd been out with her friends and had just returned home. Brian said that his mom had made him paint a fence, and that's what he'd been doing. Caleb said he'd been playing with his brother in the garden. Who lied? Brian, look, the fence is red, but the grass next to it doesn't have any stains, so the fence isn't likely to be freshly painted. Aiko and Della were sisters. Aiko was broke. She asked Della to lend her some money, but Della refused. Several minutes later, Della went downstairs, and Aiko noticed there was a $20 bill on Della's desk, so she took it, with an intention to return it one week later. When Della came back and asked where the bill was, Aiko said that a gust of wind had suddenly blown inside and the bill had flown out the window. Della didn't believe her and asked her to give the money back. How did Della realize it was a lie? If a gust of wind had blown into the room, nothing would have flown out of the window. It would have been swept from the table to the floor, but not the other way around. Betty has a sister, Amy. Gail is Betty's mother. Meanwhile, Dan is Gail's father and Samantha is Dan's mother. Can you figure out how Amy is related to Dan? Here's why. Amy is Betty's sister, and Betty is the daughter of Gail. Therefore, Amy is another daughter of Gail. We also know that Dan is Gail's father. Therefore, Dan is Amy's grandfather.
Betty is going on a date, and she's a little late. Her boyfriend, Stan, is already waiting for her inside their favorite coffee shop. Can you find him? It's this guy on the right. He has a small gift box on the table. After the date, Betty takes a car sharing to go home. The car is parked at this point. Can you figure out the only point Betty can reach? If Betty takes this weird route, she can only reach point 3. One of the most popular mailing websites is facing a system error. That's why the passwords of some clients are changed. Betty writes a message to the company's representative. My password is altered. I'm not able to log in. The company replies. This time, your password is distinct and it has 8 letters. Out of which, 2 are the same as in your previous password. Betty replies. Thanks, now I can log in. Can you figure out Betty's old and new passwords? Her new password is distinct and the old one is altered. Betty arrives at her favorite swimming pool and spots something really weird. Can you see it too? Someone swapped these guys' shadows. After swimming training, Betty goes to the public shower. There are other people in shower cubicles nearby. Can you spot who's unwanted here? This person on the left should probably use the men's bathroom. He has only one shampoo bottle, while ladies usually bring a bunch of skincare products. Betty meets her best friend Rob. He always tells the truth. Rob says, I have one specific whole number on my mind. It's one, two, or three. You can ask me just one question, but I can only reply yes or no, or I don't know. What question will you ask to figure out the number I'm thinking about? Can you help Betty? She should say, I have one whole number on my mind. It's between two and three. Is the number I'm thinking of smaller or equal to your number? This way, if Rob replies no, then the number is one. If he replies yes, the number is three. And if he replies I don't know, the number is two. Betty got a job as a cashier at a movie theater. A group of her first customers approached the ticket kiosk. Four mothers, two grandmothers, and four daughters. What's the minimum number of tickets they need to buy? Only six. Betty has three keys that open three different doors. How many attempts does she need to figure out the key for each door? Betty will need six attempts. First, she has to check the first key and spend three attempts for three doors. Then, check the second key, two attempts for the remaining two doors. And then, use the third key to open the last door. Betty enters the cafeteria and spots a thief right away. Can you see this person too? This elegant lady in the chair has a plastic detector attached to the stolen clothes. Someone robbed the movie theater. Betty calls the police and they arrest three suspects. Officers check the guy's passports. Can you spot a fake ID? Most passport pictures have a white background so the one in the middle is fake. Late at night, Betty is walking home in a snowstorm. She meets her neighbor walking a dog in the street and freaks out. Can you guess why?
the dog leaves footprints from only two paws. Betty continues her walk and sees another odd thing. Can you spot it too? It should be the moon, not Saturn. Betty enters her apartment building and meets three neighbors in the elevator. One of them is a werewolf. Can you guess who? This lady on the left. She's wearing a moon necklace. Betty goes to sleep and wakes up in an arena. The speakers announce that she must fight with one of these three hybrid creatures. Which one should she choose to stay alive? A polar bear with the head of a tiger, an elephant with a wolf head, or a hybrid with a face and body of a huge squid and the legs of a human? Betty should choose the third hybrid. Since its body has gills, it won't be able to breathe and fight outside water. After the fight, Betty gets an invitation to meet the major investor of this competition, King Harold. She enters a big, beautiful hall and sees six people sitting in front of her. They're wearing the same outfit and look very similar. It's very hard to tell who's the real king here. But after a couple of minutes, Betty approaches one of them, bows and says, Nice to meet you, your majesty. How did she know who's the real king? All the other guys were looking at the king very attentively to imitate his manners and actions. Meanwhile, the real King Harold was sitting calmly. Betty returns home and faces bad news. Her cat Fluffy is missing. Betty questions her neighbors. Lily says, Sorry, I didn't see any cats. I'm working from home. I spent all day working on my new book. Vanessa said, I haven't seen Fluffy today, and it's cool because I have a terrible allergy to cats. And Bob said, I think I heard a cat meowing on the balcony a couple of hours ago. Can you guess who stole the cat? Nobody. Fluffy's been hiding under Betty's couch all this time. Betty's boyfriend, Stan, lives just a couple of blocks away from her place. Betty calls him on FaceTime and invites him over. But Stan says, Sorry, honey. I've just got home feeling very sick. I'd rather go to bed early. Betty yelled, Liar! And hung up. Why? Take a look at Betty's window. It's pretty dark. Stan lives only two blocks away, but there's a bright blue sky in his background, which means he's definitely not at home. Betty makes a beautiful sandcastle and then lies down. She falls asleep. In a while, Betty wakes up and sees that someone has ruined her castle. She asks three persons hanging out nearby. Who did it? Kelly replies, I like your castle and took a couple of pictures for my social. Then I left to get some ice cream. When I came back, I saw the castle was completely ruined. Olivia said, I'm sorry, I was swimming far from the shore. When I returned to the shore, I didn't notice any castles. And Tom said, Sorry, lady, I don't see anything because I'm blind. The wind must have destroyed your castle. You shouldn't have to make it five stories high. Can you spot a liar? Tom is lying. He said he was blind. How did he learn the castle architecture in detail? Betty is using an app to find accommodation for her vacation. She likes three offers. Rose invites her to stay in a cozy bedroom on the fourth floor of her luxurious villa for the price of $50 per night. Jane is ready to host one person in a tiny guest house in her backyard for $30. And Tyler offers to rent his boat for $200 per night. Fishing equipment is included. Only one of these advertisements isn't fake. Can you guess which one?
This villa is three stories, and Tyler's picture is hanging on the pier. He's a runaway thief. So, Jane's guest house is the safest option for Betty. Alan is a famous scientist. He invented a special potion that awakens superpowers in humans. One night, he was having a secret Zoom conference with his colleagues. Alan's assistant, Betty, entered the office and brought him some coffee. In a while, Alan said goodbye to his colleagues and fired Betty. Why? She poured poison into his mug. Alan saw her reactions because the front camera on his laptop was working. Later that day, Alan went to the basement where he kept his secret invention. Unfortunately, someone broke into his safe and stole the potion. Alan interrogated three of his co-workers in the building. Will said, Sorry bro, I've spent the last 24 hours watching rats for my research. Peter said, I didn't even know they had a basement. You're full of surprises, man. And Diana said, I think we heard weird noises from your office two hours ago. Who stole the potion? Peter. Take a look at his legs. He's levitating. When Peter was exposed, he took off into the sky and escaped. Alan headed to the parking lot, but someone had stolen his car. He called the police and found it across the street. The thief hit a tree and escaped. The police interviewed three suspects. Lily said, I'm a courier. I came here to deliver food for the lab workers. Nina said, I'm from a cleaning company. I'm here to clean, not steal cars. Bob said, I parked my car to get some coffee. I didn't see any crimes. Can you guess who stole the car? Nina. Look at her watch. It's broken. And the black glass fragments are still in the car. Alan came home. Someone broke into his house and stole a laptop with secret information. Alan interrogated three of his neighbors. Rosie said, You might think I'm crazy, but I saw a flying man outside your house. Nick said, I spent all day in the garden picking apples. I didn't see anything suspicious. And Zoe said, I was at a shopping mall with a friend and just arrived. Who lied? Zoe said that she had been shopping but didn't carry any bags. Suspicious, but possible. Meanwhile, Nick said that he'd been picking apples, but all the apples in the garden are still on the trees. So the liar is Nick. Alan went to the airport to take a flight to Argentina. He wanted to consult with his colleagues about Peter, but there were a lot of people who wanted to fly away too. Online booking stopped working, so there was a long queue. Alan is the 20th from the bottom in a line of 100 passengers. What's his position at the top of the queue? The position of passengers standing higher in the queue is 100 minus 20 equals 80. Therefore, Alan's position from the top is 80 plus 1 equals 81. After purchasing a ticket, Alan headed to the public toilet. A woman stopped him at the entrance and said, Sir, can you please tell my husband to hurry up? His boss is calling him and it's urgent. Alan agreed, went into the toilet and looked at the stalls. He found the woman's husband right away just by looking at his feet. What about you? The guy on the left is her husband. They have similar tattoos. Finally, Alan got on a plane and flew from New York to Argentina. It took him 10 and a half hours to reach the final destination. After spending three days in Argentina, Alan flew back home. However, it took 630 minutes this time, even though the plane flew at the same speed. Can you guess why? Ten and a half hours are the same as 630 minutes. After getting home, Alan noticed Peter running away through the backyard. 
Alan followed him, but Peter was too fast. Suddenly, Alan saw his motorbike in the parking lot. He questioned four people standing nearby. Hey guys, whose motorbike is this? I need to borrow it. But all four people replied, it's mine. Alan took a closer look at the vehicle and quickly figured out the owner. What about you? The third guy is the owner. He's the only person who's not wearing or holding a helmet. His helmet is attached to the bike. Alan hit the road. He wanted to get to his lab to make an antidote for Peter as soon as possible. There are four possible ways to get there. Can you guess which way is the shortest? The fourth one. The trick to solving this maze quickly is to start drawing from the end. Someone filled Alan's lab with sleeping gas. He passed out and woke up in a creepy basement. Alan found four doors leading outside. He has only one chance to escape. He won't be able to use the doors again. Behind the first door, there's a water-filled room swarming with sharks. The second door leads to the room filled with a spider's web. The third door hides a space where scorpions are falling from the ceiling. And the fourth door is hiding hungry lions. Which door is more or less safe to enter? Alan should choose the second door. Although crawling through spiderwebs might be gross, he'll be okay. Alan arrived at Peter's house. Peter lives with two roommates, his friend Sam and his brother George. Can you guess which one of these bedrooms belongs to Peter? George is the only one who's holding a laptop in his hands. Therefore, his bedroom is the first room that doesn't have a laptop. See this pillow with red hair in the third room? It looks just like Sam's hair color, so it's probably his bedroom. Therefore, Peter lives in the second room. Peter apologized to Alan for stealing his invention and asked him not to call the police. Alan offered Peter to play a game. He gave Peter 100 pills, 50 red and 50 blue, and two empty boxes. Alan said, I will leave the room for a while and I'll need you to place all the pills in two boxes. When I come back, I'll draw a pill from any of the two boxes and if the pill's blue, I'll forgive you. Keep in mind that no box can be empty. And you gotta place all 100 pills in one of the two boxes. Good luck! How can Peter raise his chances of winning? He should put one blue pill in one box and the other 99 pills in the second box. This way, the chances are 50-50. The next day, Alan decided to explore an abandoned hospital. One week ago, the locals reported some strange sounds coming from this house, and some people saw a ghost wearing a wedding dress. As soon as he entered the building, he heard screams from the attic. Alan walked upstairs and found a wedding dress in a closet nearby. The music speaker replayed creepy sounds over and over again. Alan found three neighbors and asked them one similar question. What did you do one week ago? Chuck said, I was on a business trip in London for a month. I came back today. Sarah said, This dress is not mine. I got married in a red one. It suits me much more. And Wendy said, I'm a doctor. I had many duties in the hospital that day. Who's lying? Sarah. Alan didn't mention the dress, but she started making excuses anyway. Peter was fond of collecting rare coins. When he was 20 years old, he bought a special box to collect his coins. On his every birthday, he put 250 coins in the box. Meanwhile, his sister, who was also fond of collecting coins, took out 50 coins from Peter's box on her birthday. Peter was very surprised at his 60th anniversary when he opened his box. There were only 500 coins inside. How can this be possible?
Peter was born on February 29th. Thus, he put 250 coins every four years. In 40 years, he put the coins in only 10 times, making a total of 2,500 coins. His sister was born on any other day, and she took out 50 coins from the box 40 times, which means she took out 2,000 items. Therefore, after 40 years, Peter's box only had 500 coins.